The consecration of a church is something that's a once-in-a-lifetime experience for any individual Christian community. It's something that we've been doing over the course of the last two millennia of Christianity. It's oftentimes re referred to as the baptism of the church building. So the consecration is the dedication of the property to God. And it's just um, a beautiful, amazing experience that is connecting us to everyone that has come before us. Staying connected by our fervent desire to follow in the footsteps of the Christian martyrs who came before us and bore witness to him and continually refining ourselves as a Christian community of West Houston. Just like we were all excited to baptize our, our children coming into the faith, uh, we're also equally excited to be able to witness this great ceremony. It's uh, very monumental even more tremendous and more miraculous if you know the background of the church and how it started and the struggles that it took to get off the ground. The church started in the early 90s. It was predominantly a Greek school when it first opened. And over a period of time, we were able to form our own parish uh, in a small little office park uh, off of I-10 and Park Row. But uh, the vision was clear that the, the people there wanted another Greek Orthodox church in Houston, Texas. It was a pretty incredible struggle. We were had years where we uh, passed around the hat just to be able to keep the lights on. And I think we managed through the struggles that we did because of the people that we had, but because we were doing God's work. It has been very exciting to see how things have grown through the years. We go back and we see our, our children that are 23 and 25, born here, baptized here, and ser serving in the altar and how much they've grown in their faith from having this great church community. We moved into our interim sanctuary uh, in 2000, and we opened up here in this sanctuary in 2009. Cindy and I have wanted this church to be consecrated for at least 10 years. The good Lord felt that the timing was right now, and so here we find ourselves. We're very, very excited that St. Basil's now is going to be able to extend that experience and opportunity for people to make that sort of a connection. And hopefully it's an event that will spring this community forward into bigger and better and greater things. What we're experiencing here at St. Basil's are two days worth of liturgical services. The night before, we're celebrating what's called a Vesper service, which is a service of evening prayers. Relics, bones, of saints, specifically saints who were martyrs, will be processed across our courtyard and into the church and placed on the altar table um, this evening. will gather inside of our courtyard, being led in prayer by His Eminence Metropolitan Isaiah, and then we will begin the appropriate consecration prayers. There will be a procession around the exterior of the church, holding the relics that will be led by our acolytes, our altar boys, and the other clergy, and the faithful will be invited to follow behind. All of this is very, very symbolic. There are three different saints that are going to be placed in the, into the altar table. We're going to take the relics. We're going to go around the church three times. Once we make our third procession around the church, ultimately the hierarch, our, our bishop, will take his staff as a shepherd, holding the staff, and he will tap on the front doors of the church. There'll be an exchange at that point in time. Lift up the gates, O you rulers. And then the doors of the church will open up. And uh, following our, our leadership, our bishop, 
the clergy, the acolytes, and all of the laity will then re-enter the church with the relics. We will boil down pure beeswax into a liquid form, and then added into that will be different spices and aloes, the same formula of spices and aloes that were used 2,000 years ago to anoint the body of Jesus Christ after he died. Granting also that the relics in it of those who have suffered for your holy name may work miracles for our salvation. The relics will be placed inside of the crypt of the altar table. That will all be poured inside of that cavity. The cap will go on top of the crypt. It will be sealed. And then the whole table will be washed. It will um, receive the prism, the myrrh, that's going to be placed on it. Just like when you bring a baby to baptism, he leaves or she leaves with a brand new outfit, right? So the, the, the altar table will be covered in brand new vestments. And then our bishop will go and anoint the walls of the church. After that, we flow into the experience of the Divine Liturgy service, where the faithful are able to receive Holy Communion. There's no greater sense of community than when a community becomes the next step, which is a family. And that is what I think is the most beautiful thing about St. Basil. It's one big family. And um, when it comes to a big event, the family comes together. And so it was amazing when we announced that the consecration was going to happen, how everybody came and volunteered their time, their talents, their resources to make this event go forward. It's been a blessing to be involved in the consecration committee and all the planning. And it's been a gift for my kids to be a part of it. It's made them feel like they belong more here. So it's been a really beautiful time. It's really a celebration for our community. And really it's a testament on where we're going. We have a lot of work to do, but it's going to be rewarding, and the sky is the absolute limit. We are blessed to be able to have such a beautiful church and, you know, a beautiful community that we can go to and, you know, that we are loved. It is because of the love that our community has had for the past 27 years that you see in front of you the tremendous building that they built with their efforts and monetary support. And what we need to always remember is our heritage. Be proud that you're a Greek Orthodox Christian and love your fellow man and our church like you love yourselves. This should be a call, a catalyst for us to now look outside our walls to help the greater community. Um, there's a lot of uh, hurt and pain in the world today, and hopefully um, St. Basil's on the west side will be a place where people can come and leave that at the door and be able to get closer to, to Christ. I think the only thing on the horizon is just coming closer, doing greater things with our community, and uh, using this as a step forward. It's been invigorating to be able to shepherd um, a flock who is excited about the destinational experience that we're moving towards. We see the church becoming more vibrant. We see the church having greater connectivity. And I pray that although we don't see it, that we feel God smiling and shining His grace down upon us.